Hi YouTube, I hope you're doing good. Do you believe in Sasquatch or Bigfoot or anything like that? Um, I didn't for the longest time. I thought it was pretty much a hoax. It was about maybe 15 years ago or so. Could have been maybe like a neighbor, but I'm not sure. There was this thing. It looked humanoid. It looked like it was a man, but there was something very hairy. And it didn't look like any of my neighbors standing back in my woods by a tree watching me. And it gave me the total creeps. And um, I'm pretty good. I mean, my eyesight's pretty good. And I don't know. I, I think I saw one. And the feeling I got with it. And like I said, it could have been a human. But if it was, it was a human that um, had a lot more hair on its face. The whole thing like long and really bushy than any man. And I couldn't tell if it had clothes on or not. I'll tell you why. Because I looked at it. And it looked at me and it was sort of leaned against a tree like that. But it was bigger than me. I'm five nine and a quarter. And um it just it it just it didn't look human. I went in my house, I was here alone at the time, and uh it freaked me out. But right now I'm listening to a Israeli news live and they're talking about um, creatures that maybe have been uh, genetically modified humans, you know, um, that have been let out in the wild, whether it's from Plum Island or wherever, maybe Montauk experiments. I have no clue. But um, if you if you've looked into any of that. But, um, yeah, it was freaky, and like I said, I never really, and I didn't talk much about it, I didn't mention it, because it makes you feel a little bit off. <laughs> and I've been out in my woods, and out in the woods around Minnesota all my life, um, and I've encountered, like, wolverines, and I was chased by a bear, and followed by a timber wolf, and... A lot of things. And that didn't put the fear in me that I got from whatever this was that was watching me. And I get the feeling that it's around. And it could be like, uh, it wasn't a mountain lion. But I mean, I'll get like an eerie feeling if there's like maybe a big cat around or a pack of coyotes or, you know, something like that. But this was entirely different so um uh, to address the fact does doug have a youtube channel he does but it doesn't have any content on it and if you watch i'll leave the link for israeli news live in here or i'll put it on my community page or you can go look it's called something strange um this creature that they're talking about, or creatures, the one in particular, is said to be able to communicate and travel in the ether. You asked, how, where does Doug get his information? Well, I did tell you who he was. But besides that, he has a lot of military channels that he follows. He has a group over on Facebook called Patriots Unite. Um, and there's a lot of good information over there, but he can see you in his mind's eye. He doesn't really need to study. You don't need to study anything if you actually kind of know it all. So, um, you believe what you will. I just told you the truth. <laughs> told you he is Satan. Okay. There's a lot of antichrist out on this planet what their reasons for being who they are they vary there's various different reasons so 
um, yeah, I'm still going. I got, I got to keep checking because for one thing, it's kind of light, um, my letters or numbers. So I got to, I got cut off with this good phone, um, the other day. I was still talking and it picked it back up right where, where I put part two question mark. So I don't know. So I'll just visit with you here for a little while. And so, yeah, I believe that they've made um, inbred creatures, um, whether or not they live or survive, that's another thing, you know. And this could have been maybe even a homeless person. For all I know, it could have been one of my kids. Who knows? I don't know. I did know another lady. Um, her son used to babysit for me, for my kids, a little bit older than my kids. And he was homeless for a while. And I didn't even know. I would have helped him if I had known he was living under a bridge only a couple miles from his mom's house, you know. But, yeah, I would have I would have helped him out. But I didn't know. Yeah. He is a young man. He's totally sober in his life now. Because uh, after he got married and had a baby, he had been drinking and ran through a stop stoplight where a train was and hit and killed somebody in their car. So he went through the stoplight and at the stoplight he ended up uh, taking somebody's life. So just a minute, excuse me. Cheers. But yeah, he's not evil or anything like that. And so after that, he's like whew, done with everything. And then he went on to have a couple more kids and still doing good as far as I know. So, yeah. But I mean, it could have been somebody like that out in the woods. You never know. Because if you go walking down a dirt road and you're homeless, you know, I don't know where you're gonna sleep at night. What are you gonna do? I don't know. So I I used to when I was a runaway, I would find like uh and this was back in the days before electronic car locks and all that. A lot of people would leave their cars open, but I'd go to a car dealership where they had like the used car lot part. And I would fall asleep in the back seat of one of them until the sun came up and then I'd get the hell out of there, you know. Did that more than once or I'd go uh, sleep in a ditch by somebody's house if it wasn't too wet or cold outside um, on the edge of a city or something so I wasn't really noticed. Um, and also trying to get out of there before the sun came up. One time I had somebody come to the door and just crawled out of their ditch. And this man looks out his door and he says to me, Are you okay? And I said, Yeah, thank you. And I just kept walking, you know. I don't know if he saw me laying there or maybe he thought I was somebody dead in his ditch. I don't know. But it was on the edge of a woods and I had come walking through the woods and found where the houses were and laid down in the ditch. So, yeah. And yes, I would have rather laid in the ditch cold as a kid than be home where I grew up around. So that should tell you something. <laughs> so, and um, anyway, back to the people seeing each other in the ether and knowing things out of the ether, the Akashic records, it's there for everybody's access. It just depends on if you can master that or not. Um, God actually gives you glimpses of the future. Um, 
you know, there's different, different modes of uh, learning on this planet. And there's two different masters, you know. I mean, there's one God, but there's two masters. One masters the dark arts, and the ether isn't a dark art. It's a matter of fact where all the energy of anything that has been thought and will be thought is in there. One's God-given and one's Satan intervening. And actually he can play in there and make things seem unreal or use people to twist what some what is um, like actual uh, fact. Like if I were going to say something to you, but he'd get in there first and make sure he had somebody say something first that would make whatever I said not sound viable, you know, so, and that's true, that's all true, so, so that's where he gets his information, all he's got to do is, uh, want to know something, that's what you can do, and it will be put before you, if you believe it will be, it will be, you know, I would recommend getting my information from God if I was somebody. I would meditate on something that I wanted to know, and then it would be there. You know, it's like people, I called somebody buddy after I had tortured them. I mean, I know, don't, don't laugh or get mad if we've been there together, <laughs> but... You know what I'm talking about if I um, get on your case, whether it's trying to make you see the God in all of humanity or whatever the case may be, case, get it? Um, but then you know, even when I'm through torturing you, I'm going to give you some love. <laughs> and so I called this guy buddy, and then I was hearing everybody saying buddy, my buddy, my buddy, all over the place, you know. I said that, and I said something else, and I heard it all over the place. It's because it's out in the ether, or other people had read it. You know, it's the same type of electronical information, either in typewritten or in our mind's eye, you know, and that's a real thing. A lot of people ignore their intuitive nature like that. They get feelings and clues and ideas and all kinds of creative stuff coming into your mind through the ether and people ignore it. It's like that gut feeling thing of instinct that you're in trouble or, or there's something to worry about. It's um, uh, actual warning system to help us or a, a guidance, a tool of guidance that's all out there, you know. Yeah, got my exercises done, my kitties fed, and um, I'm going to be moving some. Well, I actually am going to take a cabinet, uh, kitchen cabinet off the wall, take it down, and um, wash the wall behind it, and move it to another area. I'm just um, cleaning things and we moved some stuff around, and this is just one more thing I'm getting out of the way because we're going to move our sink down and redo the plumbing, and we've got a new faucet and uh, different things. So just making the house look better every day. So no. later on, no, not right away. Just beautiful here. I, it doesn't look like we're going to be getting any rain for the foreseeable two weeks. I don't know for like up in Canada or on the East Coast. But for me personally, it looks like um, the weather that's coming from the north and the west. And even the south, some um, precipitation isn't even going to hit us here 
at all. So things will be really dry. They say that's what's going on up in Canada. Well, just the week before, we all had a ton of rain. They're not that far away. We're uh, um, just over a couple hundred miles uh, from the Canadian border, like a three-hour drive. And actually, by the crow flies, probably two two hours, you know. But depends. Yeah, depends on what direction I would go to get there. But yeah, they so we we get relatively some of the same weather. So what I'm saying with these wildfires. I don't know if they're going to get any rain to help them out with the dryness of what's going on. So, I don't know. And I don't trust that um, with their controlled burns. That, that that's what they're really doing. But, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I got trust issues with the government and governments when they tell me something. I don't just take it at face value and say, oh, yeah, I believe you, you know. <laughs> no. No way. Well, happy weekend, everybody. Yeah, for you working force people out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. I, I don't know what cities are going to be like in about 10 years, but I can imagine it's not going to be a pretty sight if you're not around where you can take care of yourself without depending on anything. What if you even have like a year worth of food if things go down? What then? What if you only have a month? You know? I can live for the rest of my life right where I'm at with nobody's help right now. And I have enough provisions for years on end and access to all the water I could possibly want out of the ground. Not anything that can be touched or contaminated. It's an artesian well. There's a, it's, it's tapped into an underground ocean right under me. Right where I am right now, right behind me is the pump that goes in between two rocks down in, and, and it's just, just the, the fate as fate would have it where, um, the well was drilled, pounded, uh, is right where the water's coming up. Although there's fresh springs, so you can go in my yard just about anywhere and dig a hole and water will start coming into it. My kids were trying to dig a pond and they got part of it done and water started coming in. They dug a hole in the side of the hill in the back of the backyard and they were making a fort. And they took a piece of plywood and they put their dog in there and went walking in the woods. Well, I found the dog and I told them, you can't put your dog in there because um, the veins of water come, the springs coming out, out of that hill. Um, and if it had started raining, but just, just that alone, Either one of them could have took that dog's life in just a heartbeat, you know. I said, how would you like to come back and find your puppers there uh, dead because you left them in a hole in the ground with water seeping in it, you know. That freaked them out, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, they learned their lesson there. But, yeah, it's dangerous. That was. But, yeah, and they're, they'll pound pond they were digging had water in it the next day and it was only uh, like 18 inches deep you know they were little kids just digging but I don't know if we planted a tree in it we might have I can't remember probably so 
but yeah so I have water and um well we have like three four generators two different sizes and vehicles that we can start up and run the generators and extra gas and extra LP um, thousand pound tanks and hundred pound pigs and three pound ones and uh, um, I've got a cistern pump a hand pump I've got uh, provisions to take water off uh, the eaves if we need with uh, food grade barrels to collect water I've got a creek I've got a pond my water situation isn't not in fact even the food nothing I don't if anything everything went down I still don't need anybody's help for anything nothing <laughs> so I mean nothing not right now not tomorrow and not before I've always been totally independent and have actually pounded my own well so I was a 23 year old woman with a baby 24 and the neighbor kid and I pounded my well by hand up by a lake where I lived um, I wrecked the sand point. I ran into some bedrock. I had to move it over a little bit. I had to pull the casings back out, buy new couplings, and put it, the pipe, the four foot lengths of pipe back together. Was I think we ended up going 24 foot, something like that. I pounded it all by hand, me and this neighbor kid, with a post hole pounder, if you know what those are hard hard work hard work pulling it out jacking it up luckily I had the neighbor come with this tractor and help me gank a bunch of the lengths out after I had to go get a new sand point which was really spendy too but yeah it's not cheap to um, make your world go around but what are you gonna do if you live in the city and you know you run out of food okay then what and the water's not pumping the electric grids down there's no gas there's no food no water and everybody's thieving and uh, doing whatever they got to do you know so that's just something to think about I mean you might want to think about it what are you gonna do I mean you know I I admire and commend people that will say like uh, selling like Patriot food supply and that type of thing that's a good thing few months then what you know if you won't probably if you're if you're on Long Island you probably are not going to be getting off that island after a few months you people will be cannibalizing each other or they will you know well it's true I mean I don't know if it things will ever get that bad but it's a possibility a horrible thought but I do think about everybody like that it's like just what in my state at least until winter time a lot of people are going to be okay because of the amount of the lakes and rivers that we have here a lot of people aren't that fortunate you know I can just see like people camping out around Central Park and the military coming in and trying to take everybody to a FEMA camp hey we got bottled water for you yeah we got vaccines for you too <laughs> you know but really you know back to uh, who Doug is I'm not kidding I've seen him in my mind's eye ever since I was a little kid in the ether we knew each other I uh, used to run away until I actually actually got angry 
and got sick of watching my family being hurt from somebody else's thoughts and decided to track that energy down and confront it firsthand. And guess what? I made a dent and you will see a difference in the actions of the demonistic type people. They're afraid because um, I'm not going to say that Doug loves me more than he loves himself. But there's something there in the humanness of his flesh that is beyond his thoughts that connects with the Christ spirit in me. And that's what I'm doing here. I've told people this and I've told you. And that's why I'm out here talking and I made friends because if you knew the mission I've been on my whole life, you'd say, holy shit. Holy god dang shit. And that's the truth. But So. Yeah. The ether, it's real. It's real stuff. Now, how, how, uh, uh, genetically modified humanoid part creature could travel in the ether? Well, I would say that it was probably some of the fallen angel bloodline that they bred with, not because they're trying to control animals mixed with human to give them super abilities. I don't know. I don't know. I can't say if that's true or false. I just know the ether is a real thing. And um, if you've ever gotten information out of it, or like it's deja vu, you see something, it happens, or it happened before, or you get this um, insight of something that's going to happen, and then it happens. Um, or you want to know something, and then it's just like laid out to your feet. Or you need a job, and you get a premonition of just how you're going to go about going to get that. Or all these different things that you have the ability to reach in there and grab these things out of there. It is all real. And being spiritual beings in flesh, that's the part of the spirituality that people need to get more in touch with. I'm not saying try to get go out in the ether, become a spiritual warrior in the ether, um, or try to do like out of body experiences or anything I think that's highly foolish in fact I don't think it is I know it is <laughs> but if you don't see it as foolish you will find out it is but uh yeah that is God's information and it's Satan's information in their mind in the ether for us to tap into it's their books you know, so speaking of books, I heard so many people that um, I consider very intelligent people. And most of them, like me, grew up reading sets of encyclopedias and atlases and spending their time in libraries. And, you know, um, yeah, it makes a difference. <laughs> so. Other weren't so fortunate to um, have that time to do that or it didn't even occur to them because of the um, um, people that raise some people don't have a drive for knowledge. They're just kind of satisfied and content with the lives that they lead so they don't teach their children how to really learn. They don't have a zeal for learning. So some people were left kind of vacant in that area. And that's where people like me come into play and say, hey, look, that's okay. Because if I know something, I want to share it if it can help you, you know. Oops, I'm going to be shut down, I think. So, all right, everybody. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. 
I, I got some kind of note on my camera. So I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for joining me and have a really good night or day wherever you're at.